Hi, welcome to the Guillemot Kayak Shop. I'm Nick Shada. Today I'll delve into the mysteries of book matching strips cut from 2 by material. In the previous segment, I sorted out the strips cut from the edge of a 3 quarter inch thick flat grain board. The options for matching those strips were limited. You cut them out in order, and then keep them in something resembling that order. When you cut blanks out of thicker material, then rip the blanks into strips, there are a lot more options for how you can arrange those strips on the boat. I'm going to spend some time going through some of those options, then sort out the strips for the micro bootlegger sport. So I have here a short piece of what was a 2 by 8 or so um, that I've just cut into strips. It's a little bit of a rough job, but um, this will, should serve as an example to help you out. I've got it all kind of marked up here, but looking at the end here, you can see my original marks on the end of the board showing the order. So this is what it looked like before everything was cut up. And I cut it up into three quarter inch blanks. And then I cut that each of those blanks up into strips. So we'll start by looking at the blanks. So here we have the blanks and ripping one off at a time. We end up here with a set of blanks. These are in the order they came off the board, but this is before cutting the blanks into strips. So I've got, just to flip the whole board over, I've got these blanks in the order that they came off the board. This was the edge of the original board. You can still see it's a little bit rounded over. It's not, it's a little bit darkened where it's seen more weather. Here is where I cut into the board, taking it off the sides like this. All right. So, now, let's look at one of these blanks. You can lay this out in order. We've got sort of cryptic marks on there. I have this marked as the back side. Let's see what we have marked on the front side. So, this is set I, and this is strip one, two, three, four, five, and six out of set I. So, this was the first strip. Here again, you can see this was the top of the original board. It's, it's a little bit darker than the rest um, due to getting a little bit more weather. But there, you have the top of the original board. This was not part of the original board. It was not part of the top of the original board. This was one layer down. So again, this was all like this. So there's our original blank again. If you look at these, I'm recreating the top of the original board again. All right. So now I'm going to, well, we could take this set of strips and slip match it. So we will have here a set of strips that would uh, match up pretty well um, with the grain so slowly transitioning across there. You see the color fade happen there. Um, or conceivably, we could end up book matching these. I don't have a lot of grain happening here, but this whole set would end up book matching together. So we could 
do some sort of pattern where we have sets of three that book match together. Now let's reassemble our, put it back into the same original blank as our original blank back, as the top of the original blank. And we have all of these pieces. Now, if I unbundle these, just bring it back. There's, again, is our original blank. Now we have a set of strips here that uh, is in a little bit different order. Now imagine if we took the top row of each of these, the top strip of each one of these. So, so there's the first layer. We now have another layer. Do the same thing and keep on going. So you see each one of these layers is a slice through that original board. And so this is, these are contiguous strips from the original board. And we just keep on doing that. I think this one actually should be the way it was originally. I have it mislabeled. So here I have the whole board laid out in contiguous panels that are adjacent to each other in the board. So now imagine how we again book matched the individual strips off the first board. We can do something similar here. This set of strips here was on top of that set of strips. We could now flip it over and have a book match between these two. So these are a mirror image of each other. And then we slip match it. So this one, the odd strips go over on this side. Even strips over on this side. And continue that pattern, putting the odd strips on this side, even strips on that side. So here we have a book match that repeats and it's also slip match. So this is this and this and this are stacked in order. This, this and this are stacked in order. There's a book match pattern of strips opening up like this and slip matching. That's creating a nice slip match pattern. But we could go one step further and so it's mirroring right here and then slip matching. We could also make it so this mirrors that. So it opens up as a book match there as well. And likewise. So now we have something mirroring here and mirroring there and then mirroring there and you know it, it's it's not so obvious with this what's going on but we get a you know smooth blend that blends back into it itself and then you know as from dark to light to dark to light dark to light dark to light um, and so it ends up looking more contiguous, like all of these are right next to each other. Um, and there's a bunch of different ways these can be put together. Obviously this one's uh, whack right there. 
the number of permutations on this are really kind of mind bending. It, I spend a lot of time just sort of looking at it and thinking about it. And, you know, in, for a, a better match, um, we may actually be better off. You can't see the side of the boat on this side next to the side of the boat on that side. So having those match perfectly is a little less critical than having the center line match perfectly. And we might also find out that um, it's more, it's a better match if, so here we have one and two. We could have over here, so one and two are matching, then four matching that. So I can make this pattern where things are switching. So um, here's panel four, and then take panel five, It'll be next right here. Oh, here it's alternating, boom, 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 boom. All right, and so this is matched to that. This is matched to that, this is matched to that, this is matched to that. And so, again, we get these patterns that come in waves back and forth. And so I think I'm going to try and do something along these lines. Um, but you can see you got to pay attention. Um, and it's, you know, thinking about how these are going to work gets confusing. You know, I, I have this whole other set of uh, marks on here. So I can make a whole another pattern by taking the first one of each of these, so I, and so I1, I2, I3, I4, I5, I6, and so there's a matched set, and then H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, and just keep on doing that. And so we're creating a pattern that flows in a, in a different manner. It still could look good. These could be matched. You know, again, the, the number of permutations here is hard to keep track of. And, you know, spending, I, you know, I'll spend time just sort of staring at the strips, trying to figure out what I want, what's going to look good. I think I have an idea for this set already, but... Um, I'm not certain. I'm going to have to just lay it out and take a look at it, see what it looks like, get a feel for it. There we have a set of strips that can also be matched up in various ways. We can, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sets here. They can be book matched relative to each other and a whole nother pattern made that way. This is where you have your chance to just sort of sit and think and look at things and determine what you're going to do. Again, I think I'm going to do the one I showed you before where I was match book matching the planes cut through the original slice. These are sets of blanks, so each one of these was one of the original blanks cut into um, strips, and so I believe if we take these Flip them up this way, and it's one blank, another blank, another blank, and here we have recreated our original board again. That's the task I have ahead of me right now, is getting those in order, figuring out exactly how I want to lay them out. So before I do that, I'm just going to bundle these sets back together again. So you can see how it's be easy to lose a bubble on this. Um, there's a lot going on, all these different layers put together, how, how it's all going to fit and how it's going to look on your boat. Really need to concentrate and numbering things is extremely helpful. Just help you keep track of everything. I'm using a code here where I'm numbering the strips and lettering the blanks. And that helps me keep track of which blank they were in and the numbers say which layer in which blank they were in. So numbers one through six, again, circling one side, 
not the other, just to help keep track of everything. And so that's what I'm going to strive to do next. Here I have the strips for the body of the boat. Again, these were cut by cut out of a two by twelve, um, and I have those were each cut into three quarter inch blanks, and then those blanks were cut into six, three sixteenth strips. So I'm going to just unbundle these and then get these into bins before I lose the bubble on them. All right, so there we have each bundle or each original blank in its own bin. So now I want to just get these a bit organized and labeled. I'm going to start by just saying A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, J, K. Now my, my goal, my thought with this for this pattern would be to take each layer out as a set and lay it down. I think what I'll do is I will unbundle these unbundle it down at this end as well. So now I'm going to proceed to number these strips. Um, I'm going to keep them in these bins and one layer at a time I'll go through and number them. And so I've got the first A, B, C, D on that. These are all going to be layer one. So one, one, one. All right, now I'll slide back the first layer and this will be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, M, and 2. These are all layer 2. I'm going through all of this process just so, you know, I, I could conceivably just pull them out of the bins right now and put them in the order I think they should be. And I could probably manage that and not screw up. But if I did screw up, reconstituting the board and getting it back in the correct order it would be a real hassle and so by doing this now taking the time to just individually mark each one of these at least once so it can be situated back in the stack if anything should happen you know a trip and push everything out of the way or just somehow screw up I have a means to get it back to where it started Oops, see, I need to pay attention. So I lettered them, now I'm numbering them. Oops, and I need to stick with the same number. Whenever I'm doing this kind of process, my brain tends to get ahead of me and do its own thing. So now we'll slide the next row back. Every strip now has its own unique identification. So if I should mess up, I can at least get everything back to this order. If I have strip 2F, I know it's in stack F and the second layer in that stack. So if all goes pear-shaped, I have a way to get back to where I am right now. Basically, I want to make it look like the boat's made out of one real, or a bunch of really wide planks. So hopefully the strips will just about disappear. You know, this, we can have a discussion on whether that's the best way to go, but that's where I'm going to go here. And so my plan is, is to take this first layer and flip it over. And so we will have layer one and layer two will be book matched. I'll, so I'll draw off this side of the stack, the first strip off of each bin, and lay it down building out this way. Then the next layer I'll draw off this side of the stack and lay it down in a 
book match layer with the first one. Strip number one, lift it out of the bin. Let's strip A1, it's going over here. I flipped it face side down. B1, going over here. C1, D1. Just of note, this is the one I broke when I was pushing too hard on the strips. And so, just that is strip D1. So it, it's, it's the first layer and the third, fourth bin over. So it's pretty close to an edge there, the way I'm laying it out right now. So we're up to E1. F1. G1. H1. Again, by having these benches all at the same height and nice and wide, I'm able to pull a strip out and slide it across all from this end of the strip. Everything moves easily, doesn't get caught on anything. And so working as a one-man shop, I don't have somebody else to help tend the other end. So this helps me get it all lined up. And so there is the first layer. And now we will take the next layer. So starting from this side and building out. So again, this, this is matched like that. So now I have one book match set. These are mirror image from each other. And look pretty sharp. So now layer three, we're putting face down again. So we're matching it this way. Obviously I'm going to need some more room here eventually. Now we're back to face up. I found if you're going to try and push on a whole stack like this, having something to keep things down from going sprawling can be a big time saver. I'm only uh, on four layers here, but I'm thinking, just looking at this, I've got a, a width here of 37 inches. 37 inches is probably enough to cover the whole boat. Let's take a look. So like on the bottom of the boat where we went from uh, water line to water line, on the top body of the boat, I'm going to do the same thing, just water line to water line. So I only need enough to go from the water line on one side to the water line on the other side at the widest point. Um, so take this form here, bring it down to the water line, measure it around, and we're at 32 inches right there. And I've got 37 already 30 inches there i've got enough strips already laid out here the rest are spare i want to take a look at these see if they create a pattern i i like um, and try and imagine how it's going to look on the boat so looking at these strips that at this end we've got we've got sort of pale colors with a few streaks running through it and then we looked at scan down the length here At the bow, we've got sort of a V thing going on there with a dark streak down the middle and two light streaks running through there. So I need to think about how this is going to look on the boat. If I lay it out just as it is right now, having this be the water line or approximately the water line on one side and that be the water line on the other side, I end up with coming up the side of the bow if I make this the bow, I have coming up the side of the bow this dark streak. That looked pretty nice. Um, and then it would get up part, you know, start to get up on, on the top deck. And the, the deck tapers away. It, you know, it's narrower at the bow, obviously, than it is at the cockpit. And so I'd end up starting to cut back some of these strips. Um, and I'd end up with very little of this dark stuff. And personally, I, I like the dark stuff best. I think it, it's a, the most interesting wood 
in the board is the dark stuff. And so if I had this, I'd have sort of a dark streak starting at the side of the boat and uh, running down to the water line. Um, and then most of the boat would actually be this pale color. There's some interesting grain going in here. Um, but I don't think that would be the most interesting pattern, or you know, the, the most aesthetically pleasing pattern. I think having these dark streaks sort of start at the bow and then taper away towards the stern on either side of the boat, I think that could look quite cool. Um, so kind of centering these dark streaks in the bow that's kind of where I'm, where my mind's at right now on this. Um, and so that might be taking all of this stack right here. So this whole layer and putting it on the far side. So then we have starting at the water line light, then it builds dark, dark, dark. And we have this streak running down the side of the boat. I think that would look sharp. And on the other side, this would be near the waterline on the other side. And so the light, lightest color is on the top of the boat. And most, again, most of that would get cut away. So with, it would be making this the center line here, right in there. And so we'd be cutting away that. And so we'd have it meeting dark in the front and then a light triangle coming back around the cockpit. I think that would look really sharp. So to that end, I'm going to take and pull this pile towards me and move this one to the other side. Is that going to work? I've got I don't know if it shows up in the camera, but this is my broken strip. And so that's potentially going to bollocks that using that whole piece because that would end up right in the middle of the bow. So this is a broken strip right here that would end up right in the middle of the bow on one side of the boat. I don't want to have to glue that together and try and patch that in and make it look right, but it's not a big deal. I've got a whole bunch of other strips still over there in the pile. I can take this whole layer off, put it aside, and use the next layer off the pile. So I'll end up taking this whole stack here, this is one whole layer, and we will just dump that into a bin here. So what remains is three layers, and we're up to layer four. I'm just going to slide this whole layer across, like, then pull layer five off. So layer four here is face up and ABC across this way. We want to do layer five face down, pulling from the far edge of the stack. So trying to visualize how this will appear on the boat. We have the center line here. The datum water line is going to be over here someplace. Not necessarily exactly at this edge, but somewhere up from that edge a couple strips. And so this will run down the center line. And the, si the bow of the boat is much narrower, obviously, than the middle of the boat. And so we won't need as many strips to get all the way up to the center line at this end as we will in the middle. That makes sense. The boat's only uh, like 10 inches high at the bow and very narrow. And so we only need about 10 inches to get all the way up to the center line at the bow of the boat. And so that's about here. This will be probably about where the first strip gets up to the top of the stem at the bow of the boat. But at the middle of the boat, it's 31 inches wide. So we're using all of this strip in here, all of these strips fully from waterline to waterline up through the center line. So there's going to be a taper down through here to this point. So much of this is just going to get cut off, both sides. This strip 
right here will end up being right next to the same strip over on that side. Um, so the book match here will be much more evident that it's right next to each other because they will in fact be right next to each other. At the stern of the boat, the stern is very narrow and very low. It's only a couple inches high at the stern. And so up at this end, we're only going to go like five strips up before we get to the back deck. And remember on the back deck, I have a whole nother stack of wood over here that's going to be the back deck. All of this stuff here will be cut out and not end up on this boat. It's perfectly good wood. I can use it on some other project. It might end up with stir sticks. We'll see. Um, but what I'm looking at is just this long V coming back here on either side of the boat. The, the cockpit will probably be somewhere right in here. And so these, this V will come and hit right next to the cockpit. So let's look at that over on the boat itself. So again, the widest part of the boat's right here. It is 31 inches from waterline to waterline. At the bow of the boat, the waterline is right down here, so it's 18 inches. And so we only have 9 inches from the waterline up to the bow. At that point, if we're running strips up here, they're running parallel, parallel, parallel. Up here, they start to V in at the center line. And so they start getting shorter and shorter. We have the light strips at the waterline, and then it's, we have a whole triangle of dark coming back here starting wide, getting narrower and narrower and narrower. And as it passes here, this is where the cockpit's going to be. It starts to fade away. Here on the back deck, we'll have a whole different piece of wood. So what I'm visualizing this end up being is a dark streak tapering away from the bow towards the stern through the cockpit. And I think that would look awesome. And so I think we'll stick with this layout of wood. We'll get the stuff we're not using bundled up, put that aside. You never know, we might have a need. I'm going to call that a day. I'm really pleased with how the strips have turned out. I think I'll be able to get some really nice patterns on the boat with this wood. One thing you may see from the last two episodes is book matching is tricky. Like I said, it can be hard to wrap your mind around all the options. And remember, if one strip gets messed up, it can throw off the whole pattern and you may want to start over with a whole new board. I haven't even tried to fit a strip on the kayak yet. The opportunities for making mistakes are only just beginning. Some of you may be asking, is this worth it? The answer is probably no. I don't do it on all my boats I build and any improvement in appearance is probably not justified by the added effort. You probably won't want to get involved with matching like this until you have a few boats under your belt. There's so many other fundamental aspects of strip building that will have much more direct influence on the aesthetics of your boat that you should probably leave book matching until you get more comfortable with the basics. But I thought some people may be interested to see what's involved. There's a lot of time spent just record keeping. In the next episode, I'll start putting strips on the forms. If you can't wait, my Patreon supporters see each episode a few days before the general public. If you're impatient, please lend your support via my Patreon page. I really value your support. If you want some exciting reading, I've written two books on strip building, which you can get at the links provided below. Once again, thanks for watching and happy paddling.